This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. You might have heard of them before, but if you haven't, they are one of the biggest VPN services that works on pretty much all devices you may have at home. You can use it on your iPhone, iPad, Mac, PC, Apple TV, and a ton of other devices as well. ExpressVPN will simply protect your internet browsing experience while giving you the best speeds possible through their servers across the world. So to browse privately and not risk your information being stolen and or tracked, but also get the best speeds possible, check out ExpressVPN using the link in the video description below. That link will give you three months free of ExpressVPN services and every 50th user that signs up through our link will receive a $300 Apple gift card and that applies to all tiers of subscriptions. Oh, and one more thing, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like ExpressVPN and don't find it useful, you can get 100% of your money back and that won't affect your entry for every 50th user on that giveaway. So that sounds like a pretty awful deal, right? Uh, I don't think so. Check it out via the link down below. You will not be disappointed. Hey guys, it's Jeff and today we have some beta releases from Apple and one of them is iOS 14. Now we also saw updates to macOS Big Sur, tvOS betas as well, and a watchOS 7 beta. So if you are on any of those, there should be updates for you all fairly soon. Of course, if you want to hop onto any of these betas, go to beta.apple.com to enroll and you should be able to check out all the betas as they are released. So with all that being said, let's move on to beta 7, check out what's new, and also see if we're getting closer to an official release of iOS 14 from Apple. Okay, so before getting into any changes or new features, I did want to say that we do have some very important improvements made in beta 7. The first thing was the super annoying lack of airdrop functionality in beta 6. I couldn't airdrop any sort of files to a computer with macOS Big Sur, betas on it, or if it was even on macOS Catalina. Basically, the file would act like it was sent, but it would never actually send, and I'd have to do everything manually just another way. Thankfully, that issue now has been fixed and AirDrop is working 100% on iOS 14 beta 7. One other issue I was having was insanely long startup times for apps, and it would be both third-party and Apple's own default apps. I haven't noticed anything so far in beta 7, so hopefully this is now an issue that has been fixed, but that was super annoying in beta 6. Now, one last thing I wanted to point out is that the Maps app now works a whole lot better. In beta 6, the Maps app would crash on almost every third or fourth action that I would take, and that was super annoying. Um, it would almost make the app unusable, but thankfully here in beta 7, it appears that all of the bugs were worked out completely and the Maps app is working flawlessly once again. So with all those fixes out of the way, let's go ahead and take a deeper look into this update info for beta 7 and also the new features and changes for iOS 14 beta 7. Okay, so we have iOS 14 developer beta 7 loaded up onto our devices. And just in case you guys didn't know, um, there is a difference between developers and public betas. The public beta will likely be out tomorrow for public beta testers. But for today, the beta 7 was released for developers just to keep you guys up to date on all of that information. Now let's check out the about screen, specifically software version. Obviously we're on iOS 14, uh, but we have a new build number 18A. 5369B and that B does indicate that we're getting very close to an official release here or at least a GM version. Once that turns to A, that's typically where we see a GM version. So hopefully um, by beta eight, we see some sort of GM version and then an official release fairly soon. Now, lower in this menu here, uh, we have modem firmware that has actually stayed the same. So it looks like uh, not too much has changed here. My total update size is 417 megabytes for my iPhone 11 Pro Max, and the update was actually fairly quick. So um, it seems like not too much was being changed in the background through this update. Now, one thing that has changed in the settings app specifically is if we go into the wallpapers menu and we go into our stills, uh, go a little bit farther down into the menu here, and you can see that on the stills we have white and dark themes or light and dark themes uh, for the rainbow uh, background here. So if we go into this menu here, you can see that we have um, the rainbow is in the blue color 
and then as you can see it will go to dark once you're in that dark mode so it looks like apple is trying to expand their dark mode and light theme customization options into other wallpapers that they've released into the past um, so hopefully maybe we see some with these i doubt it we'll probably see a whole new kind of um, album here with the stills in regards to uh, the wallpapers in ios 14 uh, with maybe like the iphone 12 or something like that um, but yeah you now have the options to go light and dark theme with the rainbow wallpapers in the wallpaper menu here in the settings app. Now, if we go down to the exposure notifications menu, the availability alerts is now grayed out. I'm not exactly sure um, why it's grayed out. It seems to be a bug. So in case you guys are using exposure notifications, do go and check on location services. If your location services are on for exposure notifications, um, this might just be a bug. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but it has been pointed out this this is now grayed out even though location services was available for exposure notifications in beta six. And now that issue seems to be coming on into beta seven. Now, if you guys didn't take a look at uh, my video on iOS 13.7, um, if you go into exposure notifications, you can now uh, turn on exposure notifications without an app. Um, you just have to make sure that your country and your state is uh, basically allowing exposure notifications. So um, do check with your local uh, kind of government or local city um, or state uh, organization, uh, health organization, and see exactly what's going on with that. Um, but yeah, that is uh, just a few changes here in the settings app specifically. Now, before we exit, I wanted to show you guys, you guys have been asking how my battery health is. Um, battery health for me, as I mentioned, went from like 99% to 95% in the first, I think six, five or six betas of iOS 14. So it declined pretty rapidly, but it seems like we've finally leveled out here at 95%. So 95% uh, I'm still fine with. It was just throughout those betas, it was very weird. My battery health was declining almost 1% per beta update that I installed. So thankfully that has now stopped here. And with that battery life has actually gotten just slightly better over the past couple betas, I'd say from beta five. So uh, fingers crossed that that stays the same and fingers crossed my battery health does not dip any lower in the next couple of months. But yeah, guys, that was all to see in the settings app. Let's go ahead and check out some other changes that have been made. There's just very few here in beta seven. If we go to the app library, we now have new categories. So one category that I saw, test flight, we have in there, um, information and reading, shopping and food. We just have more categories located in the app library um, so that you can kind of categorize everything accordingly. Now, one thing I would love in the app library is specifically the availability to um, kind of customize these categories and just do everything yourself instead of it being automatically chosen for you. That would make things a lot easier and it would make it almost seem like um, what you're doing here on the main screen can be kind of flow over to the app library. I think I would actually use the app library a whole lot more if I can move full folders like this in their respective kind of organized patterns there over to the app library. That would be really cool. Um, so hopefully that's something we see here in the future. I know there's a lot of development left for iOS 14, but it just seems like these categories, these preset categories makes it really hard to find your apps that you're looking for specifically because you might think of them as being in other categories versus the ones that Apple suggests. But that's just my two cents on that. Um, I know everyone likes it different, but um, yeah, maybe we'll see some development for app library in the near future. Now, one thing that I did notice specifically in beta seven is when I go into the control center, everything is working a lot faster. Um, so opening these menus is working a lot faster. It just feels more snappy than what it did before. It seems like there was almost some sort of, not really lag, but just slowness to um, the old uh, kind of betas that we were working on and how the control center o interacted with um, with those betas, it just seemed a little bit weird. So now all the force touch operations are just so much faster. And I really like that about um, beta seven because it just indicates that we're getting a little bit closer to an official release when you start seeing things um, just get a lot more snappy like this. And that really is a good sign um, for the official release and how good that's going to be. 
Now, one other thing that I wanted to show you guys, and this isn't exactly something new, but it's something that we didn't really catch before simply because, um, you know, you can only see this at certain times unless you play with some settings, but um, the good morning screen has drastically improved since beta one. The text is bigger, everything is a lot more kind of in your face. Uh, it, not really annoyingly, but it looks very, very nice when you wake up now uh, versus what we were seeing in beta one where the text was kind of small, hard to read and everything like that. Um, the buttons here at the bottom got a little bit bigger. The dismiss button was very small before and now it's a little bit bigger and everything looks a lot better here in this good morning screen. So this has kind of evolved over the beta process. We just haven't really covered it uh, completely because we would get it uh, kind of like the next day after a beta release and never really followed up on it. But yeah, if you guys use this feature, it's getting a lot better. And in my opinion, it's one of the best features of iOS 14 and you should definitely check it out uh, when you go ahead and install a beta or update to the official release. Okay, so speed and performance. There's actually nothing really new to talk about. Speed and performance are pretty consistent other than some of the bugs that I mentioned earlier that were ultimately fixed in the next beta. Either than those small inconsistencies, I'm noticing that iOS 14 is running as smooth as ever and it definitely feels feels like on the speed and performance side of things, we are ready for an official release. Now, battery life, on the other hand, could see just a little bit of improvement. I don't feel like we are back to the performance that we saw in iOS 13, so that's sort of disappointing for me at least, but hopefully after using beta 7 for a while, we'll get and see better performance. I'm not going to say how beta 7 is just yet as we just installed it this morning, but I will update you all in a separate video on battery performance and how that is doing in iOS 14. Okay guys, so that was iOS 14 beta 7. And of course, if you have any comments and or questions, you are more than welcome to leave those in the comment section down below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible. I actually do read those and I respond. Uh, now, if you guys are considering hopping onto the betas onto maybe some of your daily drivers, I would say to proceed with caution and do expect just a few drawbacks as this is still a beta. I do have it installed onto my personal daily driver and I would recommend the update, but just keep in mind that the performance might not be as it would on an official release. Okay, so guys, that was today's video. And just in case you didn't hear before, there are also releases of iPadOS, tvOS, watchOS, and macOS betas. So if you're on any of those betas, you should see an update for those platforms very soon. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you want to see more content in the near future, definitely get subscribed, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell button to get notifications when any new content is released. You can also check me out on Twitter at Jeff Updated, and we have a Discord server you can check out as well via the links down below. Also, one more thing to check out is the new updated podcast where I go in depth into some tech topics that we don't discuss here on the channel that will be live very shortly. But anyways, guys, I hope to see you in some future content or on some social media platforms sometime soon. But until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.